So what you see here is actually a landmine that we dug up from the soil in Cambodia, and we were looking to see if it was still functional because we were trying to determine how they break down in the soil over time. So we could try to understand from that how the soils help them break down so we could spend the money on the fields that were most live rather than the ones that were already pretty much degraded and dead. Uh, landmine remediation money is very limited. Now, what we're going to do here is you can see this landmine. We've torn it apart. We've taken out the main explosive charge, and we're about to press down on the pressure plate using this drill press so we can control the force. Let's take a look at it. Okay, and so you can see that it just did some pressure volume work. You could hear the popping sound. You saw the smoke not just made, but it noticed it was actually coming out from inside of the plastic baffle inside of that, which means that there was a, an expansion of gas that pushed that smoke out. It just did some pressure volume work. Now, if we wanted to know about uh, how much enthalpy was involved in that reaction or how much energy change was involved in that reaction, in order to do that, we have to make sure that there's no pressure volume work that can actually be done outside of our system. To pull that off, what we need to do is actually put it inside of a rigid walled container. And that rigid walled container is called a bomb. And that's why you can see that it's called bomb calorimetry. Now, a lot of people think of bombs meaning things that explode. And it is the common usage now. But what bomb actually refers to is the rigid walled container. Because in the old days, if you needed to get inside of a castle and you were an invading army, what you could do is you could dig a mine that went under the walls. That's where the phrase undermining comes from. They went underneath the wall. They got to the, just underneath the wall. They'd put a bunch of black powder into one of these metal bombs. And they'd light it. Now what was going to happen though is, just like you saw the landmine fizzle and do a slow expansion, that's what black powder usually does when you light it. It's not a sudden catastrophic explosion. So they would put that inside of a rigid walled container that would hold in the pressure, prevent the pressure volume work from being done at all. Right up until the wall fails of that bomb, the sudden expansion of the pressure takes out the wall and then the evading army gets inside the castle. That's the original use of the word bomb. I bring that up because it helps us remember exactly what we're talking about when we talk about bomb calorimetry. It's not about exploding things. It's quite the opposite. It's about holding in all the change in pressure so that there can be no pressure volume work being done on the surroundings. Now, let's take a look at how that's set up. And we're gonna have a thermometer here so we can measure the change in temperature before and after our reaction occurs. And we have a motorized stirrer so that we can make sure that this water bath is homogenized so the temperature is uniform throughout. We'll have this outside be an insulated jacket again because we're cutting off the system and the surroundings from the universe. We want the surroundings to be a bit smaller than the rest of the universe. Now we'll light it electronically because we're not going to be able to stick our matches inside of this system anymore. Uh, we just can't get inside. And so we have a little electrical signal there. Uh, we'll have our sample here so we can light it on fire. We've got oxygen so that it can actually do a combustion reaction. And we have it all in this rigid walled container here that keeps anything from uh, expanding or doing any work. Now the heat is going to transfer straight out. This is not insulated. It's going to transfer out easily and we'll see how much temperature change we have on the outside. So basically this piece is going to be our coffee cup calorimeter. We're putting it inside of a bigger calorimeter. Now the thing is we need to know the heat capacity of this entire setup right in here. And of course heat capacity allows us to convert between change in temperature and heat energy. So we'll measure the change in temperature. That'll tell us the change in heat energy. We know how many moles we put in there. And as a result, we can divide the change in temperature by moles. We're now in, I'm sorry, change in energy by moles. We're in kilojoules per mole, and that's going to be delta H, our enthalpy. Uh, that's how we're going to be able to measure uh, a calorimetry experiment using a constant volume, aka bomb, calorimeter.